was adopted. I got a six inch for a pasta. So now I'm coming for the whole roster. Yeah. Brother, thanks for coming on the show, man. My pleasure. It's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, I think it's been, it's been long coming, right? We've been yeah, chatting yeah, back yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my first, I'm sorry, you're, I, I don't know all your background. My, my background to you was, uh, you know, who's the guy who looks like he should be in an action movie with next to Pat Sabatini? I don't know why you have that fucking look to me. <laughs> yeah, Am I wrong? Yeah. Especially with the way you stand in your picture. I'm like, this fucking guy should be in like the next Expendables 10 or something. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, uh, but no, obviously that was a long time ago. I've been following you ever since or whatever. Um, so you train Pat. You're the, so Pat, I, I know we'll obviously talk about everything, but uh, Sabatini is with Daniel, John, and yourself. Correct. Right? Yeah. He started with you, though? Is that right? Yeah, well, yes. So, um, but not in the capacity of coach and an athlete. So, okay. uh, when he kind of started with us, we were pretty much just training partners together. Okay. Um, and that was right at the very beginning of his pro career. Um, he might have still been technically an amateur then. I kind of okay. can't forget. It was a long time ago. Um, so we were rolling and training together a lot and doing things like that. And then kind of slowly over a year or two years, um, although while we're still training partners, I kind of got in a little bit more of a coach's role with them, um, primarily with MMA and then Sambo. So, okay. and then it just really kind of cultivated into like what we have now. Okay. Well, so you're in PA you grew up in PA anybody? I grew up all over the place, but I spent a majority of my time in Pennsylvania. I went to high school out here okay. and everything like that. What was your upbringing like? Uh, it was pretty wild, man. Yeah, um, yeah so... You don't have um, anything you want, but you don't have to tell me anything. You want. No, no, hey, you know. Um, so I grew up with my father. Mom left when I was a little kid. And so we moved around a lot. Things were a little volatile, pretty wild. Um, grew up kind of uh, just brazen myself, pretty much. And yeah. then... Um, Things took a great turn, though, moving up to Pennsylvania because as I was, you know, you're a little kid and you really don't have uh, too many role models or things like that at that time besides, you know, people on TV and athletes and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I began wrestling and that changed my entire life. I, I, I wholeheartedly feel like, you know, I could be one of those, I could easily be someone in jail right now if it wasn't for wrestling. It definitely gave me an avenue. At what age did you get up there? Ninth grade. So I moved up here from South Carolina. So we came up from South Carolina, moved to Trenton, and then uh, stayed in Trenton for like a summer and then kind of lucked out and moved to the suburbs. How did you like Trenton? Yeah, it was wild, man. It was a wild ride. <laughs> it's a little rough, isn't well, it? Well, you know, I moved up from South Carolina and I'm still like, hey, y'all, y'all want to yeah. go out and play, you know? And, and I play basketball and all that shit all the time, you know? So I'm going out of the courts in Trenton. You know, little white boy, he's going, thing. hey, y'all, pass, pass me the rock, you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I learned real pass quick. Um, one dude came up to me, he put his arm around me. He's like, yo, you need to knock that fucking Southern accent <laughs> off. And I was like, yes, sir. All right. You know, so. Like, uh, exactly that. You got to remove the yeah, vocabulary. Yeah, I had to fight a lot when I moved up. Well, I always had to fight, you know, when you grow up in, um, you know, you, you know, places that are middle class or, you know, under, you know, we fought, we fought a lot. Plus it was back then, you know, it was just mm -hmm. kind of what everyone did, you know, but, um, yeah. So, but the moving up here, I did really had to fight a lot until I shook that accent, you know, but you like to fight though. The, like it was that in you anyway, or no, I hate. I, so, uh, as a kid, I was always really into martial arts. Um, I wanted to do cr things like karate and stuff. My parent, your father never put me in karate. So I played like your traditional, football, baseball, and, you know, did pretty well in all those sports and things like that. But um, primarily, you know, I saw myself, I wanted to be like a ninja when I grew up pretty much, you know. Is there a movie that made you want to be a ninja? All of them, man. All the blood sport, kickboxer, like the ninjas, American ninja. Like, I was into all that. I was a kid in the middle of the night, I'd sneak out. And most kids would sneak out and go get drunk and go to parties and stuff like that. I was out there doing like ninja rolls, hiding in bushes and shit, like, like complete <laughs> knucklehead. All the neighbors like, who the fuck is this kid? Yeah, like, fucking dipshit. I'd be in the backyard, yeah, like yeah, punch like, dancing my range and shit. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Chinese stars and all that stuff. It was it was ridiculous. And then you entertain yourself. Were you were you an only child? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Yep. You had to almost. Yeah, you know, that's pretty much about it. You know, yeah. so well, anytime there weren't sports going on, I was totally just yeah, just total ninja, one hundred percent. You know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> were you watching any like sports on TV that you like that were kind of you know, more along them lines or were you like into basketball? I, I liked every, every sport growing up. I mean, anything that I could play, I did, you know, um, I was one of those kids where, uh, things weren't so great at home. So I stayed out 
as late as I could possibly stay out every day. You know, it was just, hey, cool. Who wants to play football? And I'd play football as long as we could play football. And those kids would have to go in and I'd find another group of kids under the lights playing basketball. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm in, you know. Yeah. So I just stayed outside as long as I could. Oh, you want to play wall ball? No, I'll play wall ball. You want to play baseball? Let's play baseball. So I did everything, every everything I possibly could. And that was basically your childhood all the way until you find wrestling. Correct. In ninth grade. Yeah. Were you getting into like trouble in school and stuff too? No, I, it's kind of late for wrestling or no? Yeah. Yeah. Around here. Yeah. yeah. In Pennsylvania, it's very late. Okay. Um, and, you know, kids are born with the wrestling shoes on, you yeah. know, around this area. And, you know, uh, luckily, so my, my father was a real good wrestler. My father um, actually wrestled in Delaware and things like that. And he, I think, um, I don't know, he says he won like the Junior Olympics and stuff like that as a kid and yeah. um, should took second at States and should have won States, but all this other stuff. But um, so when I was getting fights as kids, and I never started a fight, I wasn't like a bad kid, like going out looking for trouble. I just had a face that people wanted to punch, basically, when I was a kid. I look like a nice, I look like a nice little kid, nice blonde hair. Kid. Yeah, and everyone, everyone was just coming after me. Everybody. So it's, it's, it, it's like, come on, man. I just want to like I play sports and I got enough shit going on. I got enough problems. In my back yeah, yeah, I'm not fucking nunchucky <laughs> right in the head, you know. So, uh, but luckily I could always fight. Um, you know, kids would start fights and I'd whoop their asses. And I had no idea what I was doing. It was just, I guess, good. Some people are born good hips. I was just mostly that, you know. And you, it was either that or a salsa dancer. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. And I can't dance, you know. But uh, yeah, man. So I just did all that. I just did whatever I could, man. And uh, Love sports, love athletics, and I just all day, all night, whenever whatever I could do. So then you start wrestling. Did you take like it was a pretty natural to you? No, I was fucking easy? terrible my first year. I got my I got killed my first year wrestling. But um, so what had happened to me is you know all these street fights growing up as a kid. I never lost a street fight. I never started a fight as a kid, but I never lost a fight. And then I go to wrestling, and uh. My first day I'm there, I walk in and then one of the wrestlers grabs me and he's just holding me down by the back of my head, right? And just talking shit to me. And I'm, I'm getting my ass kicked in there. And, and uh, in the middle of a match? No, it's just in the middle. This is like the first day of practice. Like yeah, they just grab me. Well, it's, you know, it's ninth grade, you know? Yeah. And uh, I remember I'm lying there and I'm like, holy shit, I'm not as tough as I thought I was. I'm like, this is... This is like next level stuff, you know, because I always thought like, yeah, I thought I was something, you know, something cool, you know, and then I'm um, getting my ass kicked by someone who's literally not even trying, <laughs> you know. Right. So um, what made me stay and continue to do wrestling is like I'm going to come back and kick his ass one day. I mean, I can't take this mentally, not being able to right. do this. So got to be able to do it. Never didn't win a match my whole, you know, first year, got my ass kicked. Um, but I went to wrestling camps all summer. I worked out. Next thing you know, I'm outside running every day. I'm doing, you know. Hundreds of push-ups. I'm doing a thousand sit-ups a day. Just doing whatever I could. Just total like vision quest mentality. Mm -hmm. um, then I came back my sophomore year, and I was at a very big high school where it's you know it's tough to succeed in you know athletics. If you do well in like the school I came from, you know you're probably pretty good because there's so many people in the school. And um, so I came back my sophomore year, made JV, won a bunch of matches. My junior year, I took. Um, hey, you still haven't beat this kid yet. I whipped his ass. I went back that after that summer. I went back and I walked right in that wrestling room after that one year and going to wrestling camps. That was the same, you're saying the same year, like the, or the, the following, following the following year. We're at the high school. I was same like, Jack. hey, yeah, and we're teammates now. Yeah. But I whipped his ass. I was bigger. Yeah, I was more in shape, and it was just on my mind. It was stewing. It was cooking. So I whipped his ass, and then um, became varsity my junior year, and uh, we ended, went on to have one of the best wrestling um, teams ever in my school, and. It was a lot of fun, and uh, but wrestling totally hooked me. Wrestling was just, it was like, it was the hardest thing I've ever done, and it was just amazing. So, what are you th at that? Age, what are you thinking at that age when you're so into the sport of wrestling? Like, are you seeing yourself continuing to do that in your future? Are you already kind of no? You know, seeing other things. So, I was an artist, and I was going to art school, and that was just the way that was going to be. So I knew that there was going to be no wrestling in college. So it wasn't even in my oh, head. Shit. So that was, you knew that that wasn't what you were going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just taking it as far as I could. So my very last high school match I had was an all-star match. And, uh, and I was like, well, huh, I guess I'm going to go to art school, but literally I walked right into Sambo 
And then, so I walk into Sambo and I'm like, wow, I get to wrestle people and like, you know, break arms and legs and. Can you, so explain to me, I'm, I, there's way too many fucking martial arts. Explain to yeah. me Sambo. Let's say, so I started looking up Sambo today. I mean, I've heard of Sambo, but yeah, I started yeah, looking yeah. it up to like be knowledgeable when I was here. Yeah. And uh, then I saw combat Sambo. Yeah, yeah. Is that. So there's two different, different kinds. Kind of there's sport and combat. So sport is pretty much like a combination of judo and wrestling. Their pins is very fast paced. Um, so one of the reasons, well, excuse me, why in like the UFC and all these big fight organizations, you see these combat sambo guys doing so well in you know like Zabid and obviously guys like Khabib and yeah. there's every week the, the list becomes longer of these high level sambo guys in uh, in like MMA Russian based wrestling. Well, so it originated in Russia, but it's one of the most popular sports actually around the entire world, just right. not here in the United States. Um, so when we go compete overseas, it's like you might as well think, you know, we're playing professional basketball. People are taking pictures with us. And I mean, it's huge. Okay. But there's a pace to Sambo, to both sport and combat. There's no stalling. There's no guard. You know, even in MMA, people can stall. You know, like we can bounce around and not throw kicks or punches for a while. Can't do that in Sambo. They're st- they start dinging you for stalling. Um, if you pull guard, it's a penalty. There's no resting. Everything has to be super fast paced. If there's nothing happening within like five or ten seconds on the mat, they restand you. It is just balls to the wall. Um, and it's a good way. So in combat samba, when we go compete at like the Pan Ams, the World Championships, World Cup, you might have four or five fights in one day. I mean, that's just phenomenal experience as well. So these guys are fighting constantly. Um, Pat. You know, Sabatini talking, you know, going back to him, you know, he won the President's Cup in Scotland, which a lot of people don't know. It was the first time we ever beat Russia. Um, it was me and uh, a handful of uh, other local pro fighters. We assembled a team Wait, for the first United- time ever you guys beat Russia was you guys? You mean? Yeah. 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 There was four of us. So Wait, you knew this? Yeah. And you don't text me this before you talk? <laughs> Oh, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was crazy. So, well, well we beat everyone. We, we won it. You know what I mean? We, okay. Yeah, we beat everybody. You were based out of here, though, when you did that? Yeah, so uh, so the four guys, it was myself, Johnson Jajut. He's a pro fighter. He's actually the most winningest USA combat sambo athlete of all time. Evan Chalinski and Pat Sabatini. So uh, all four of us were pros. And uh, so there was a special tournament called the President's Cup. And the first year they had it, it was in Scotland. So Russia sends four guys in four weight classes. Uh, and, you know, um, the Dutch team, four guys, four weight classes. Um, every team from basically every country sends four guys at these pre-designated weight classes. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we fight tournament style. And then, um, you know, I guess they tally up the, the first place, second place, yeah. third place, and all that. And um, so Pat had a bunch of fights that day. Pat won and won, uh, the, like, the most valuable fighter of the entire tournament. All right. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was killing it. Got some special awards for that. But uh, yeah, it was the first time we got two golds, two bronze. And that was in Scotland? That was in Scotland. How was yeah. Scotland? One of the most amazing places yeah. I've ever been to. Yeah, yeah. So it was just several places that to me seemed like... Two nicest places that you want to go visit. I could live in or take the kids to or whatever. That in South Korea. We went to the world, cha- the world Championships in South Korea. One of the cleanest... N- nicest places I've ever been. Yeah, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Not on my list. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But well, I have to look into wasn't it. on mine prior to. <laughs> let me tell you. So yeah, so uh, so you get a, like a lot of fights. It's super fast paced. So combat is very interesting. So combat sambo is very closely looks look, looks yeah, a lot right, like right. MMA, That's right? Striking the whole yep. Thing. But however, once again, there's no pulling guard. It's super fast paced. Uh, we're allowed headbutts. So you get guys locked up. Bang, we're cleaning them with headbutts, elbows, uppercuts, throwing them, taking them down. There's this, I call combat sambo the glue. What a lot of people have um, in MMA, I find that they're either very good strikers they're, or they're good grapplers or they're good jujitsu, right? And they could be good at also kickboxing and, you know, good MMA fighters are pretty good at everything, right? Yeah. But there's this little, this glue between your striking to your takedowns, to your throws, to your wrestling, to your trips, your sweeps, that isn't practiced enough. 
right? Because people go take their different martial arts, you know, oh, I got to go to my uh, striking class. Oh, I got to go to this, right? And it's not a blend. Combat Sambo, nothing will blend all of that together better than Combat Sambo because it's so fast paced. You can just. Is that like a common thing to go like go to a school for here? Like no, no way. No, that's hard to find combat sound. Like legitimate combat sound. Yeah, yeah, we do that. Um, I actually, one of the USA coaches and compete and do things like that as well. So we actually put the United States team together. Uh, myself and my coaches and the other people in USA Sambo. Okay. And uh, some very talented, high-level guys in there. Now but I feel like I want to do combat sambo. You should watch. You want to, there is, combat sambo is, exciting. it's like interesting. It yeah, it is. It's amazing to watch. You know, obviously, you guys like Fedor and all these other things, and uh, but it's the back. glue. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not interested in, in that. Yeah, I love Fedor, but ah, eh, what are we doing? Here? It's been several years. Since Come on, man. Yeah. There's a lot of guys. Um, so we got a little sidetrack. So you get into that. You said you discovered Sambo. Yes. So correct. now where does your path continue at that point? Once you're aware of this and you start, I guess, training. Yeah. So um, did Sambo for a little bit, and our Sambo school closed. So we were in Philly Sambo. And that was right at the time. I'm talking like 1995 is when I graduated high school. So I was doing Sambo back in 95, 96, um, you know, that time period. And there, there was no jujitsu anywhere around. The only jujitsu school was Maxercise down in Philly. That a lot of guys came out of Maxercise, like the Maglarese brothers and um, Jared Weiner, um, probably a bunch more guys. So there was pretty much only Sambo, which was in Philly, which is closer to me. Mm-hmm. And I kind of dug it anyways because the mentality so it well it, a lot of it was I would have done both put it that way so it wasn't that one I was going to choose one or the other but the fact that it was close and it was just it was hardcore it was nuts man these guys we were just like you could walk into a practice they're a bunch of psychos just running each other over throwing each other just flying arm bars and stuff so it just excited me as a wrestler like it was just um there's like I said a different mentality you know, being young, it was just all about that, just kind of adrenaline thing yeah, to me, yeah. you know. But yeah, it was feeding all that stuff that you were in. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. And I love the fact at that time, once again, kind of going back to me, we kind of talked about this a little earlier off camera, but being a little hard headed, I loved the fact that there were no belts back then. You know, I'm like, I don't need a belt. I'm like, shove your belt up your ass. Like, I don't give a shit about your color, your belt. Get out of here, man. Because in Samba, it was like wrestling. You know, you go out, you could, your match could be against a world champ. You have no idea, you know. And I love that. And, you know, back then that. So is there no categories? Like, is it, is it weight? Is it yeah, so you have your weight. So now, they're re, right now, they're getting ready to institute. They just started instituting a belt system in Sambo. Now, as being, well, as being a little older. Well, uh, listen, man, there's a lot of pushback on it. The old heads are not yeah, yeah. happy about a belt system, for sure, you know. I, I see both sides of it now. Being is an instructor. Is jiu-jitsu now? Right? Yeah, did. Where you're yes. allowed to, like, smack or something? Yeah. Just, you know what I'm saying? Very close. Yeah. Now you got belts. Nah, you know. Sorry. Yeah, it's. Yeah, that seems so fucking weird when you see the, the, the guys doing jujitsu and they're like smacking each other. It's like, yeah. I don't know hey man, man, there's an there's there's, video, there's, there's an ass for every seat, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, if you like to lay on your back and get slapped, <laughs> go for it, man. You know. <laughs> you don't have to be in a sport to do that. Yeah, you, yeah. Some people call that shit foreplay. You know. So I don't know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> So, yeah, you get paid, you know, for a little foreplay, you know, that's it's all good, you know. I like all this stuff, though, man. I like every martial art. It's like the combat aspect of it, right? Y- you know. Or maybe the yeah. physical, not the combat. Uh. So, I do. So, certain martial arts, you know, there's there's a beauty to them, which I like, and there's a fluidity to them, and there's... Um, there are certain things about every martial art, man, I really dig. You know, some of them I, I, I shit on sometimes, but I really kind of do that as a joke. Um, well, I mean, like, you know, earlier we were talking about me being a ninja, right? Like Kung Fu, for example, right? Like, I think Kung Fu is, Kung Fu is just fantastically beautiful. And there's, there's a million things I love about Kung Fu, you know? So whenever I'm, like, ripping on Kung Fu, it's really from, like, an act of love, you know? But... Obviously, you wouldn't really be doing kung fu. Cheesy. You wouldn't be doing kung fu in an MMA fight, you know. Yeah. But I think most people know that these days, you know. So kung fu different than like so they say Wonder Boy is karate stance, karate kind of background. Would that be considered kung fu? No, no, kung not fu at all. Very different. So you know what people need to look at. So here, when I teach 
probably shouldn't even say all this stuff. I don't know who's like really listening or whatever, right? But hey, bro, so millions of people. When I teach striking, so what I do is I don't teach striking. It's like nobody's listening anyway. Yeah. I'm sure all, I'm not sure to me. All my secrets. Yeah, not not to me, right? But uh, so when I teach striking. Oh, there you go. I, I didn't even see the whole card over there. All right. Yeah. yeah. We're running low on things, so I can barely see what's in the card. Uh, so you want to live with that? I'm good. No, no, no. I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. The. Uh, All right. So Wonder Boy. Yeah. So. Kung Fu. So it? so here's the way I look at strikers. I don't really look at them necessarily like oh they're they're Taekwondo or this or that. What I do is I look at their fight stance. So when I teach striking, I teach out of actually four fight stances. So I teach what we call a fencing stance, which is a Taekwondo stance. I teach a hybrid stance, which is like a traditional MMA stance. I teach a bullfighter stance, which you're seeing a little bit now out of like Moreno, some of like, uh, there's a couple UFC guys that, that fight this way. And then I teach a hand fighting stance. So what we do is I teach all forms now under one umbrella. So what happens is if you come out at like Wonder Boy in the fencing stance, you know, the karate stance, that stance has an identity to it. So I know how to counter your stance by going into maybe my hand fighting stance. So, so you're teaching all these things. I'm teaching everything together. Things. Yeah, because what happens is so many people are a little bit one dimensional with their striking, right? And the problem is, is there's always someone that can a matchup that can beat you, okay. right? So for example, the Wonder Boy, his stance is predicated on keeping space because he needs to keep you in kick range. So a lot of backwards movement, keeping you long, throwing kicks, and then he blitzes into his striking, right? So if you're fighting someone in that stance, I don't look at it and say like, oh, hey, it's a karate stance. I go, they're in a fencing stance. I go, his cross is going to be garbage. She's sideways. So all we really need to focus on is his jab, his, his sidekick, maybe some spinning stuff. So what happens is when we teach that now, now you're not worried about all the other stuff. You don't even have to think about it. You know what the, the you main idea. You know what tools yeah. they're not. They're yes. Really you know which one's is junk and you know what, the identity of the stance. So when you know the identity, you know how to counter that stance by moving into an appropriate stance, like maybe a hand fighting stance. Okay. So a hand fighting stance would be basically, um, I move up, take your space. Um, basically, your hands almost look like a praying man. It's like come up over your hands. So let's say I throw an overhand and you come up the block. I come in and I control your hands. Um, Daniel Cormier versus John Jones, their last fight. Daniel Cormier was beating John Jones with a hand fighting stance. He was So he stayed close enough to him that John Jones couldn't use his kicks. And he was tagging him. He was hitting him until... He backed up and gave John Jones enough space to head kick him and knock him out. And then he cried. And then he cried, which I don't blame him. It was rough. I do. Don't cry. I just, yeah. I just, so, so we look at all this stuff. I know. It's <laughs> fine, fine. It's rough. It is. But yeah. Vegas, all right. uh, But we look at all that stuff. So what I do is. Good. Yeah. So we, I don't look at things like separate martial arts anymore. I look at everything like a stance. Um, so when I teach, I don't teach like everyone the same way. I don't teach everyone out of uh, just a traditional like a Muay Thai stance or anything like that. I feel that those days are just over in MMA. You have to be able to do everything. You know, um, you have to be able to, if you're coming in, I need to be able to make changes on the fly. So we have, we have this thing, stance recognition. So I'm always looking at the way you're standing. Are you standing southpaw, orthodox? Guys switch nonstop now. Now, okay, are you in a karate stance when you switch southpaw? So Basically, I'm able to very quickly um, think of all the correct reads, all the correct changes I need to make in my stances or, or ways to um, counter what you're doing or neutralize what you're doing very quickly just by knowing exactly what stance you're in. I know all my options. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do from every stance. Is there many fighters who switch stances who are comfortable? Is, like an, is he a good example of somebody who can vary the way he Yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of fighters these yeah. days. Yeah, there's, I mean. Everybody but Connor. Well, Connor, what he does is he tries to get you into his left hand to throw power, right? And the, is he training at all, in your opinion? I don't know. Well, what the fuck is he doing? He's making money. That's what he's doing. But uh, he, what has he won? One one fight in his last in the last five years? You hear the guy who said you haven't won a fight since Obama. Oh, and well, very true. Mm, fuck, that hurts. Yeah, him and well, look, Nate Diaz. That might have fucked up the whole thing to be going honest. Nate Diaz has won one fight in the last five years too, and those two are, yeah. but those two are like the most popular MMA guys. Everywhere right now, and they've got two wins in the last five years. Yeah, I don't like seeing him lose. It's just you know, it's funky stuff. We'll get to that in a little bit. I think we should recap it slightly if you don't mind. (laughs) (laughs) We we haven't chatted since she texted me 
all sorts of <laughs> abusive comments about me going for Connor and him breaking. You know, just an I told you no. <laughs> now I do like Connor's stand up, but guys will have a book on you. You have to be f- fluid a little bit. You know, like you can't. Uh, Look at things this way. I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with jujitsu at all, really. Like, just if you sit on your ass, right? I know how to pass your guard, depending upon what guard you're in, you know? So if you put me in um, single leg X, I know how to beat your guard because I have to recognize what guard you're in and then I start to beat it. You put me in the next guard, I have to recognize what guard you're in to beat it. I'm not going to try to beat every guard the same way. People don't look at stand up like that. They look at stand-up just like it's fucking stand-up. Like, this is just people just throwing punches and kicks at each other. No, every position is very important. Your foot placement is very important, determining how I'm going to react and neutralize exactly what's going on. But people don't really look at stand-up the same way that they look at... They don't nerd out on it the way that they nerd out on jiu-jitsu. Is it fair to say that the general public doesn't appreciate the level of creativity and intelligence a fighter needs to have in order to be good? Yeah, the general public doesn't know shit. No, I know, you they don't know, know shit, but it's, like, yeah, like right, your so average sorry, person. Sorry, the, the slightly educated, casual MMA watcher. Do you think they get it? To, I mean, it's fucking impressive. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, like, when you're the very little, little, very tiny amount of anything I ever did was box for several years. Like, it's so fucking basic yeah, compared yeah. to all this stuff that you're that, that you just laid out in the last twenty minutes. You know what I mean? Like, be. Like knowing how to handle different stances, but also knowing all those other positions. Yeah, yeah. What your next move should be. This is all still defense. Like, then also, what are you going to do to win the fight? Yeah, yeah. A lot of that's. It's- there is. There's a lot of information there. And that's why you have to take a good approach to your learning and your studying. And um, it's very important that. Um, you know, you're not just doing busy work all the time as well, too, that you are technically working on um, new ways to become more efficient in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, my big thing is whether you're doing jiu-jitsu, I mean, in any martial arts sport there is, right? I mean, we could talk about wrestling or whatever. Everything should be, your number one goal at all times should be creating an advantageous position for yourself. Everything should be, how do I create an advantage at this this time? No matter what or the what sport. you're good at or just in general? In general. Because I think that, that that's usually a thing, right? Like they're creating, like actually like the Connor thing, you're creating that advantage, but it's for the one thing that you're trying to do instead of in every case. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and you know, the, the better guys know how to create these advantages in more situations than the other guys do. Um, you know, MMA, 10 years ago, you would have guys like Vandalay Silva and Rampage and these dudes would stand in front of each other and they would just hook the shit out of each other until someone fell, yeah. right? Those days are long gone. You know, you have to have an educated approach to what you're doing in there these days. You have to. The guys are way too good. They're just too fluent with everything. And um, you, you have to really up your game up, you know? Yeah. And if you don't understand, if you're not studying constantly while you're putting in all the other work and once again, learning how to create advantages in all these positions and you know how to use your tools the best and, and understand what the other person's doing. Because that's one thing people don't really pay attention to. Everyone gets in front of a heavy bag and or they're shadow boxing or they're always focused on themselves. Well, they pay little attention to what the person across from them is doing, how they're reacting, you know, and, and, and gauging their reactions, counting how many times they're switching stances. and, and you really that through sparring? Or do, do you mean looking yeah. at a... Well, you're referring to like watching tape. Te- or technical sparring. Technical well, or 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 watching tape, right? Getting in and just sparring isn't good enough because for a lot of people, getting in and sparring, they're just trying to survive the round or or win the round, right? But you have to find the right people to go with, and um, that you can. So here's a little tip that um, that I think is good for everyone as well. So typically, when you spar, right? Um, let's say you got a room full of guys. You do one round with someone, then second round you're with someone else, third round you're with someone else, right? That kind of is not helping you. Really? Because what happens is you might take that first round and I might start to gauge and learn your tendencies, right? And a lot of times it's with our team and we already know what our partner's tendencies and things are, right? But you don't, you're not offered the, the ability to, to go to round two and say, now I'm going to implement my counters to what they were doing. Right. So you're not playing chess. You're still playing checkers when you're switching each round. Right. 
So you get with a partner that is pretty much equally as good as you, you know, someone that maybe you guys know each other pretty well and you get in, now you're playing chess. Now, first round, maybe he had the upper hand on me. Maybe he's landing his jab a lot more. So second round, I come out and I go, all right, now how do I beat his jab? Well, maybe uh, to beat his jab, I start throwing like a lot of rear head kicks to make him keep his hand up, keep his hand back, right? Or maybe I'm just parrying his jab better. Then he's going to go next round. He's going to come back and try to trump what I'm doing. Right. Now you're, you're now you're just getting deep down the rabbit hole. And now you're learning at such a faster rate. Right. So like GSP, that's when you're having fun. That's when you're actually learning. That's when you're having really fun. Shit. Yep. That's what I do. Like So with guys like Pat and uh, Gordon Wigington, another great professional, um, I do rounds uh, typically with Pat and Gordon. Gordon, I, I do sparring with two times a week, boxing sparring, where basically we're going in and we're just countering each other. We're laughing. We're smiling. We're not killing each other. Yeah, we're same. still throwing some punches, you know, and we're keeping each other honest, you know. But uh, the, the learning, I feel like I'm learning more in a week's time. It would take me in four to five weeks. Um, as far as better ways to be a coach and ways I should move against certain people and, and things of that aspect. So that's a, a tip that I highly recommend people take advantage of. Pro amateurs, and you know, pros, that's amateurs, whatever. Just want to bring in different yeah. looks. And just yeah. Like Stay with one guy for like at least a few rounds, right? And, you know, someone someone good, someone technical. And then even in between rounds, we even talk about what's happening. You go, oh, I saw you were countering what I was doing here, yeah. right? And you're like, yeah, I know you would see that, you know? And then... You're just now it's to me now you're playing chess. Now you're getting better. You're not just doing busy work. Yeah. You know, which is that's what it's all about. And now you're learning how to create advantages faster. Now you're seeing things a little bit more quickly. I feel like I'm a better fighter just from that conversation. No. Yeah. We're all better. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm gonna go back to uh, art school. So wait, tell me about that. So you were going to you were gonna go to art school. Did you go yeah, to art school? Correct. One semester. That was okay. it. Yep. And what then I moved. Did, what did you want to do in art? So when I was younger, I thought that I wanted to be a graphic designer, commercial arts, that kind of thing. And, okay. and but while I was kind of doing like my own art on the side, I was going to make a living doing that because I was already kind of doing that in high school. So I did one semester and like I was kind of alluding to before, I didn't have a great home life. Yeah. So I kind of did one semester and I was like, I need to get out of here. So I just straight moved to Colorado for two years. So then, um, well, I I was making money doing art and things out there, but there I realized I don't want to do art for a living. Um, so then I was kind of like, what am I going to do? Move back here. Why, got, did you, why didn't you want to do art for a living? Man, let me tell you. Uh, were, you were you also like a drawer, a painter? Oh, yeah, all of it. Everything. Everything. And I realized that um, the personal side of the, of the art, you know, having to make deadlines and, and having colors the way other people wanted them and all those things, I really realized like it just wasn't for me. Um, I really just wanted to kind of create and do my own thing. And I didn't want to have to do art to someone else's specifications. It, I really realized it was kind of a drag on me in particular, you know, and um, it was, I realized it was something I, w I wouldn't want to do every day forever, you know, occasionally and all that stuff. Yeah. Making a living as an artist is the way you kill an artist basically. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was hard. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a little harder. It was a great learning experience, you know? So, um, yeah. So I kind of realized that I had a, you know, uh, a little, I had to do kind of like a 180 and figure out where I wanted to go from there and, and things like that. So, okay. so you're in Colorado and then you come back here or move, you train back here? No, all I did was basically like mountain bike and just enjoy 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 yeah. life and kind of grow up a little bit as well you know i was so pissed off and young when i lived out here so when i got out there it was just a breath of fresh air everyone was so oxygen nice was yeah it well less less different. oxygen you know <laughs> but um i lined up and you know like i just kind of like wasn't such an asshole out there you know and uh moved back here and got back into training immediately i think the first day i was out here i was back in sambo and then uh Sambo school closed down. Then some of my friends were doing jujitsu in the basement of a karate place. And uh, so I went down, started doing jujitsu with them. And I didn't know shit about guard and all these positions. So they taught me how to basically train and fight off my back. And I was teaching them like knee bars and foot locks and all the stuff that were back then frowned upon mm -hmm. in jujitsu. Um, when I started doing jujitsu, I mean, my instructors, everyone used to yell at me all the time. Like, you, you don't, don't do an ankle lock. That's stupid. And I'm like, kind of works, you know. I used to get shit on so hard. 
So like just because it wasn't allowed or because it was frowned upon? Or? It was frowned upon. Yeah. All leg locks and knee bars and all that stuff back in the day and early jujitsu were totally frowned upon. I was a I was, an, I was basically the asshole because I was wrist locking everyone and doing all that other stuff. And, um, Nobody can compete anymore thanks to you, man. Everybody's hurt. Well, <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting shit on. Yeah, all my instructors, you know, some Gracie instructors and everyone, you know, they're like, Eric, you can't just, you can't, you can't ankle lock everyone all the time because I would go in your, I never even learned how to pass guard. And, I mean, until I was already 10 years in because I didn't care because if you put your legs up around me, I was just ankle locking you, you know, or knee barring you. Like, I didn't need to pass your guard. I was just, you're giving me your feet. So um, eventually I was like, all right, I need to chill out. I need, I need to learn how to pass guard. So I just kind of took away my ability to, to ankle lock a knee bar for a while. Got a lot more technical. And then, then all of a sudden, you know, now everyone's pushing the leg lock game and, yeah. and, you know, ankle locks. And yeah, now I'm like, everything I used to get yelled at for now, right. the same people are preaching. Right. You know, you I don't thought want to sound like an old man being like, well, back in the day, when back I in the day. Yeah. yeah. But it really was back in the day. Yeah. Really was some old man shit, you know? So, uh, but I'm glad everyone does all that stuff now and, and everything. But yeah, I used to get. All right. So shit. you learned a pass card and then what, what happens next in, in your career? So I was competing. I was doing like Nagas and doing all that stuff back around like 2000. And, um, Back in the Wild Wild West and Naga, man, people were wearing wrestling shoes and shit out there, you know, and fucking weird shit, you know, and out there doing jiu-jitsu. There were pretty much no rules. It, I felt like, you know, people were getting slammed everywhere, and it was it was wild. It was fun. And um, then, uh, so I was competing doing that, and then I got into amateur fighting, and I don't even know how long ago, and did that when that was kind of the Wild Wild West, before there was even fighting in Pennsylvania and all that stuff, and did that and then went on and fought pro for a little bit and um, did that and then opened up a gym. So once I opened up a gym, it was pretty much it. Yeah, that's a wrap for right. all of that, you know. So what was the, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to guess why you would want to open up a gym. You love all these different, you know, martial arts. Yeah. You've yeah. done them. You have, you have a way of thinking about them and then you decide you want to share that. Is that kind of the, the mindset or was it, I'm going to make a, you know, a business and build something, you know, build something yeah, it was always in the back of my head. Yeah. yeah, because I found myself every time uh, when I was at all of these other schools competing and even as an active competitor and stuff, you know, you still find yourself on the mat helping people and and other people are going through fight camps and training for stuff and you're just always there for them. It was just a very natural kind of thing. And yeah. um, so for me, it was as a fighter also too i knew that you have to have a you have to have the backup plan because you know you could be a professional fighter for a month for all you know before an injury takes you out or um or you know you could have a, a 10 year career for all you know it's like who knows what's going to happen so in the back of my head owning a gym was just always going to happen now was the current gym the first one you opened or did you so i opened a so we were a lot of us um um a lot of guys and some of the guys you've interviewed and stuff like that, we were all training together at a boxing gym that I ended up taking over. Okay. And then I turned it into NPR and, and all that other stuff. And then we were there for a while. It was like a little over 3,000 square feet. We outgrew that. And then now we're in the, the big bigger one. Yeah, it's around 8,000 square feet. I mean, it's pretty big. Especially when we got it. Like, um, picture, but it looks sharp. Oh, yeah, thank you. It looks very nice. Yeah, it's... Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh, it yeah, it's pretty damn big. Like the... oh, yeah, it's my dog. Yeah. You do post a lot about your dog, don't you? Yeah, he's, he's with me dog. everywhere I go. Uh, American Bulldog. Okay. His name's Sambo. Nah, yes. I know. I did have a cat named Judo at one time, but... Uh, Actually, both good names. R- R- R.I.P. Judo. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... Yeah, we do a lot of stuff, man. We keep it busy. Um, it's a cool yeah, thing. It's, yeah. Thank um, you. Well, first, by the way, thanks for the hat. Oh, yeah, my pleasure, As man. you notice, I wear hats basically every day. Thanks for rocking it. I mean, you didn't have to put it's it on. I appreciate it. I love it, by the way. Hats with me, it's like they either fit great or I look silly as fuck. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> and I put it on in the bathroom, and I'll be honest, I, I was wearing my uh, blue coat hat, which is a go-to. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is cool. I put the hat on, and then I'm like thinking, fuck, if it fits me like an asshole, I'm going to have to rock it. Ah. It's going to be like covering my ears in the show. Yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, but it's also. Awesome. Uh, well, good. You wouldn't hurt my feelings if you, nah, you nah, know. I don't want you to angle uh uh, no, I love that. So thank you. Um, all right, 
right. So NPR means what's the what's the name? Money, power, respect. No, I'm just joking. No, like uh, Get the fuck out of here. motivation, <laughs> philosophy, respect, that kind of stuff. You know. So okay, nice. yeah. Did you do all the design work? Yeah, I do everything. Yep, all the websites and all the designs. So that design career came back around, you know. So yeah, I do everything. All t-shirts, hats, and. That's see, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to have in your back pocket. Just, yeah. You stand out because it looks good. Oh, well, thank I you. I can tell all the websites I was on today. Yeah, yeah, so thank it's you. Legit. It's clean. Yeah, thank you. Good fonts. Did you design the the? Everything. The, what's it called? The fonts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, uh, no, so I didn't design the font, as a matter of fact. Um, so I went on thefont.com. Oh, I go to the font. Yeah, they're, fin- they're fantastic. fantastic. Everything. Yeah, 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 you can't, you can't beat it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I did a couple, like, little little things to it, like the lines afterwards yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that, you know, because a lot of guys use the uh, triangle in jujitsu, you know. So that's the three lines I would make up, the triangle, just, you know, yeah, and keep, keeps it moving. Better. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit of a different spin, like my own little spin. It has like a military vibe to it. Is that on purpose? Um, no, but I wanted something. So being a design guy and branding and doing all these other things, you know, when I came with up with the the, the name and I didn't want to back then when um there were fewer MMA schools and you had brands like Tap Out and all this other stuff. Affliction, everything was like skulls and shit, and, and fucking yeah, it's fucking wild, man. Everything looked like bedazzling. like a biker bar or something, <laughs> like wild, right? So, um, so I wanted to kind of go against that, and I want something that was a lot more brandable that didn't have my name in it. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. That, shit on that, that and that was so. I, I literally kind of came up with everything, just really as a branding sense, and something that I feel would be a little bit more timeless that wasn't yeah. necessarily um, like. Like a fed, what's popular now yeah. or anything like that. So that's funny. All the new stuff I'm doing for the, I design all the stuff for the show too. Oh, fantastic! Uh, my background's in art and design. And TV like I love this place. Everything. Like walking in, this is like my total vibe. Yeah, 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 I love it. Well, we're leaving in two weeks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find something cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I was saying that the all the new logo stuff is that kind of color, that same like uh, oh, yeah. goldish. Um, yeah, can't go wrong with gold, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's like and it's like an antique gold kind of thing. Yeah, it has a nice, yeah. Like yeah, Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Um, so what now, man? What are we? Uh, what's so? I, actually, I wanted to ask you. You do also the what is it? Com tactical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Training? Tactical training. Yeah. Can you pull up his website? I didn't get a chance to watch the video. <laughs> it reminded me of all the stupid videos that they post on social media of like people doing the wrong thing, teaching. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. So what? Where did that come from to teach that type of? Is it like a defense? Yeah, yeah. So so our tactical program is, so there's three of us that run the program. Bob Clark, uh, the, the guy we call him uh, Murder Santa, right there with the beard, <laughs> right? So he's he's the real deal. So Bob Clark um, has spent many pizza years overseas. Salad. Which, Which one, one do you think about? Both, have? but pizza yeah. primarily. Okay. Yeah. Primarily pizza. Fuck up the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? The TV is usually the sound is off for that reason. But I want to get to your music, so I turned it up on purpose. Oh, all so right. So then we can go to that. But now we're just seeing a guy with no shirt on, blowing off pizza and salad. Yeah, he's cool, Gabby. He definitely takes the salad. That guy. He's definitely <laughs> salad <laughs> first. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's Bob Clark right there. Okay. Now he is the legit man. Um, Numerous years doing special stuff overseas, um, FBI, special stuff. special stuff. He's also Philly PD right now. Uh, he's also the Pennsylvania. He's the head of uh, combatives for the for Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, does everything. He's done combat, sambo, sambo, box, right. like everything. The guy is a uh, hapkido. He's a real deal. So what happens is a lot of the, the gun defense and knife defense stuff um, – it's directly from him as a result of years of being on the force and actually using this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's nothing that we do that's tricky, any BS, uh, nothing that's going to get you hurt or killed or anything like that. My primary background and Johnson Jujut, um, who's also in here with us, our primary backgrounds are hand-to-hand combat. Mm-hmm. So, you know, not just like an MMA style thing, but real self-defense hand-to-hand combat. Nothing sportive, you know, stripping away all the fluff that would be involved in a sport and just you know, getting to the real self-defense aspect. But is this stuff geared towards just the general audience? Like the general yeah. public? 
Well, so what we do is we have like a three tier system that we use. So when we're teaching like civilians, there's no rules, right? Do whatever you have to do to live, survive, whatever. Uh, military, they have some rules that they have to abide by in certain situations. Oh, so, you're, so you're also dealing with, with people who are in that. Oh yeah, that yeah, field. we yeah we it's train. Not just me wanting to learn how to protect myself from somebody's gun. Correct, right? So we train everyone. So we were just uh, on Fort Dix on the base uh, okay. a couple weeks ago, training some of the guys, getting ready to leave to do um, some missions, oh, okay. some 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 places. But um, so and then we trained police, and the, the police are definitely the toughest because they have the most restrictions. Um, and video cameras strapped to them at all times and, yeah, yeah, and all this other stuff. So, and they basically can't do anything, yeah. <laughs> which is like, it's wild. So, so we train, uh, depending upon who the person is, we train them according to what they need to know and what they need to do. Yeah, there's something very interesting when I see these type of things. Like you always want to know how you'd respond in a case and you hope that you could do what this guy's doing. Santa, but- well, if you're lucky, they come up to you and they put the gun up to you if you're lucky. Right. If someone really wants to kill you, yeah, they're going to stay over there and just shoot your ass, you know, and you're not, no, then no matter. You got to you got to be like, get over here, bro. Shoot it to my face. Yeah, yeah, shoot me in the head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you come a little closer? Uh, but, you know, that's one thing that people don't realize a lot of times. Like, we keep it real. Like, hey, if someone's going to kill you, if someone wants to kill you, they're probably going to kill you. You know, they're not going to walk up unless they really want to try to Is that intimidate. Is every class? That's, that's well, yeah, that's hey, you know. And, and, you know, and it's a personal decision to everyone, you know, like if someone's come up to you, assault you, assault you, and they want your, you know, your, your, your iPhone, it's probably in your best interest to give them your yeah. iPhone. You know what I mean? It's all the time, but I feel like some, a little part of me would say like, don't give them the iPhone. Yeah, it depends. It depends. I look at things where you're at. Like, yeah, if you're standing away from me and you're holding the gun, you know, and you want my stuff, I'm going to throw my stuff at you, you know, take it, you know, cause I know there's no way I'm getting my hands on you. But if, if we're close, maybe you have a chance, you know, but so that's basically where we have to keep it real and we have to operate things through like, OK, if you have a chance, if you're lucky enough where, you know, you know, the odds are in your favor and you feel like you can make this happen, make it happen. But otherwise, you know, you're probably it's probably in your best interest to comply. And in a lot of circumstances and situations, though, however, that might not even be an option. You might just end up getting shot. Um, a knife situation is a different thing as well, you know. Um, knives are even scarier. Knives you know? are fucking scary. I'd rather get shot than stabbed. I do feel like a lot of people agree with me on that. No? Team shot or team, or team shot? I'm team shot. a book that it's more messed up to get stabbed. Wait, what is yeah. it? Yeah. Getting stabbed is worse. Getting shot is less personal. Yeah, and a yes. lot. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of people, you also, know. like stabbing somebody. Like, if you have to defend yourself, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not stabbing anybody. It's dicey, man. Yeah, it's freaky. You know, even uh. You want to see some weird shit? Watch a couple people doing jujitsu, right? They're just on the mat rolling, and then throw a plastic knife in between them. Yeah, that sounds like a fun Watch, game. It, to be it is fun as shit, right? Because then all of a sudden they look over, oh, yeah, and then oh, yeah, and they're going for it, and then it's it's all hands on the weapon, you know. That's where like Can a lot of people. Now that would be fun to watch. It's because it's always a blast. Everyone stops. I always or yeah yeah. Like bare knuckle, fuck bare knuckle. Throw a little jiu-jitsu. taser knife in there. Actually, we do it to the jujitsu smacking guys. Whatever, uh, combat jujitsu, whatever yeah. the fuck it's called. Yeah. When they start smacking, be like, fuck no, throw a knife in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm getting carried away. Yeah. But that's the, the so, you know, yeah, a knife. Rubber knife though, right? you, yeah, well, you know, every once in a while, I'll throw a real one in there if you don't like them too much. But you got to get all hands on the weapon, you know. If you got a knife in your arm, I mean, I'm going two hands on. And that's where all these other martial arts and. I'm never and, going to NPR, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay out of there. We, you know, it's oof, there's, some, there's some shady people in there. from Meet Santa. Yeah. Uh, so, well, your gym, I would like to visit at some point. Oh yeah, uh, anytime. Come on, up, you know. Um, can you pull up? So you're obviously an artistic fellow. Yeah, yeah. What did the music passion come about? Because I I knew nothing about this side of you. Oh yeah, and yeah. And then, which I should have maybe known, but then you post one day like. Yeah, a lot of people kind of don't. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, a lot of people, I mean, this is just for me more than anything else, you know. But um, it's uh, it's something I like to do. So when I was in Colorado and I realized I don't want to be a graphic designer for the rest of my life, I met some guys that were making music with like a little 8-track, you know, tape decks and all this stuff. And they were like legitimately making songs. and. 
Uh, it was just anything, you know. Some of it would have some beats to it. Some of it would have some guitar, and it was just them like fucking Wait, around. So, am I about to hear hip hop? What, what no, no, no. This is like harder stuff that most people aren't even into these days. It's more like Nine Inch Nails type stuff that some people are into. Uh, not many people these days, you I know. I feel like you're softening the moment. No, can can we hear some of it? What song should we listen to? Well, first of all, we have the right to play this. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have the rights. Yeah, yeah, I'm authorizing it. authorizing us to use this music for perpetuity. So, a lot of people like the second song. That's probably one of the more popular ones, I Maybe guess. You vocals? Yeah, I do. So, I do pretty much everything on it, except uh, the really good guitar. I bring in a, I've got a really good guitarist that I'll use if I need really good bass. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm a musician, but I'm a, I'm a shitty musician. So, I'm not great at anything. You're a doodler. However, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> harmonica but uh i'm an arranger and like a writer and all that other stuff so when when there's intricate stuff that needs to be played i have the real musicians take yeah. over and do that but i do all the vocals and i write i write everything and all the synthesizer so um i had one so i'm getting ready to buy a piece of property and on that property i'm gonna have a nice big like real recording studio yeah so it should be but fun. like for like a house property you mean just or? yeah yeah just for myself yeah so i'm yeah, I'm in the process of uh, hopefully getting acquiring a bunch of land here, so I don't want to jinx myself too much, but gun range, all that fun know. stuff, yeah. Gun range, yeah, everything. It's gonna be like candy land. It's gonna be like the Battle River Range locally. Yeah, pretty much. Don't pretty much. Your address on the nah. there every day. I just need a place I can shoot range. every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll have a little bit of everything, I you know. Have a little good range. I got a little range, like like a pistol range in Philly, which is fucking boring after a while. And then I used to go to... Um, you want to be able to do like the Keanu Reeves and John Wick stuff, you know, move around and... Well, that's like the Terran Tactical people in California. Yeah. Have you seen that shit? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. looks fun. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. See? Yeah. We're going to put it together. Sign me up. Yeah. Memberships. Are they coming out? Kind of drunk? Well, you know. We'll, we'll see. I feel like you're not going to let me in. Uh, okay. Play number two, please. Depends. It all depends on how much I like this Ah, that's all good. <laughs> Pat's got a great song. Iron Man. Yeah, Black Sabbath. I like this though. This is like hype shit. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I mean, it gets me like a little hype, some of it, you know? Maybe do, um, Coming Back, maybe, um... That's like pretty, yeah, you can go with that one. Yeah, it's just a lot of sand. Yeah, and damage to this shit. A couple whiskeys of this. That's how I pretty much wrote it. Some rubber knives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got a town. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Well, yeah, so it's like I said. I think I made like twelve dollars on it, you know, something like I that. Made, but uh, I made negative a thousand. Nah, this year, so totally <laughs> yeah, right. We it's do, it's just for the love of it. it. Yeah, it's for the love of it. I wish I had more time, you know. But uh, you know, I'm seven days a week. Before, like, what was the last thing you recorded before this? Had been a long time. Yeah, I, I've done some random songs here and there, but it was the first time I kind of put like, you know, just even getting five songs out and and all that. So I've got a bunch more songs that I'm gonna try to one day finish up that are like ready to go probably like another 15 that are just borderline ready to go but it's just you hard to find the time you're making shit though, i like, love it i love it yeah I, mean, you it, wish you could just I just want to fight all day i want to go shoot guns all day i want to make music make art it's just like i'm just, just do everything i want to do all that butt music because i'm terrible at music. <laughs> i just buy the tracks yeah right yeah <laughs> uh but yeah there's something about i think Art and fighting that goes together nicely when the fighter has it. In yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Right? Is that a brain? Like well, a brain, the way the brain works. Hey, you know, look at look at the old uh, books. Uh, you know, the Book of Five Rings and and all these other things. And uh, you know, these books I read hundreds of years ago, where they they specifically speak about a good fighter. She you know should be able to write or draw or do some of these other things as well. It really because it's just um, broadening the mind and your skill set, thinking about things differently and mm. seeing things differently and stuff like that. So, yeah, if, I think that um, if you spend some time get, diving into other things, I think it's all reciprocal. I think it all helps each other. 
you know, I think fighting could help your art, you know, in the same way or vice versa or whatever, you know, I think just getting out and having experiences every day and doing what you can and doing as much shit as you can, you know, mm-hmm. um, it, it just all helps. Yeah. It helps, helps everything. You know? And it also gives you a different outlet to, to focus your energy and let yourself rest fully from one thing yeah, and yeah, to the next yeah. and then come back. And yeah. It's nice like that. You yeah. know, it's cool. Um, any, what's Pat looking like for August? Is he, is he, he ready to go? Good. He's, yeah, he's looking, looking good. good. Yeah. Yeah. He's looking real good. He's, uh, I'm really bringing Pat up a lot because he was supposed to be here with you too. And, uh, yeah. he's actually running on uh, one of the classes right now. At one is he? Yeah. Yeah. Because well, or here. he was, yeah. Well, no, so he, so he normally you say, runs. Did you tell him you can't come on the show because I want to go on the show? Yeah. You gotta well, at first you sent that message. So I'm like, shit, I'm going to have to find someone to cover his class. But, oh, uh, is that what you said? Catch up, don't respond. Well, he missed, you know, we had, uh, the great floods of 2021 the other night, Monday, and, uh, he got kind of flooded into his neighborhood. And, uh, so normally he teaches in my gym, excuse me, on Mondays. But uh, that was just kind of a weird day for everyone because a lot of people couldn't make it in because of the yeah. rain and stuff. So I think he wanted to get in there tonight gotcha. since he wasn't there Monday, you know. But he could have come. about a month to engage with that conversation was. So <laughs> when he said he was coming, I'm like, all right, we made it work. Yeah, now yeah, we're yeah. Square one. You know, Pat's one of those dudes where um, the great thing about Pat is he's just constantly training or he's out fishing. You know, it's yeah. pretty much like one or the other with him, you know, so... Um, sometimes I'll text him even, you know, and I, you know, I'll, it's like, I'll text him something and it's like, I don't even expect to get a response. I'm like, I'll hear him that I'll see him that night or something like yeah. that. You know, we'll go over it or whatever, but, and then, uh, he's a peaceful fellow. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a monster though. You know, like a lot of these, most of these fighters, you know, you meet and come in here. They're all he nice. So good in his last fight, but he had me nervous as shit. I said it before. I don't know why, I don't know what it was. I guess cause it was his first, you know, but, um, he looked great. Yeah. You know, it's, but, uh. I don't, know. I don't know about about all those other guys. We joke around because there's there's a video of us walking out of the tunnel, and when his they start playing that and Iron Man, and it's the first time there was a crowd at any yeah. sporting event. I was ready to lose my shit walking out of there. Like normally I'm like real chill. Yeah. I was so hyped up. Yeah. So I don't know how you couldn't have an adrenaline dump because I basically had an adrenaline dump coaching. Right. You know, I was just so hyped about the whole thing. Um. Yeah, and, you know, the fact that he went out and, and put on a great performance like that. And if you saw, you know, because that guy beat Pereira or whatever, and then Pereira fought and just beat a really good guy last Saturday, um, you know, so Pereira it just... Fought, uh, what's his name? You say it, I'll know it. Because I, I like him, the guy that he just beat. Yeah, uh, uh, the fuck. He has like 10 kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Very religious. And he's a monster. He's a fucking monster. Yeah, yeah, he's a beast. God damn it. What's his name? Uh, yeah. Somebody shout it out. Anybody Nico know? Price? Nico, Nico Price. Yep, Nico. Yeah, yeah, Nico Price. Yeah. And I, so I respect Nico a lot. And so uh, the fact that uh, Pera went out and beat him like that, it yeah. just gives uh, Pat's last opponent even more credit. You know, and it makes it makes Pat's win look even and better. And huge, too. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, yeah, real big. And uh, What do you think about the guy he's fighting next? Looking forward to it, you know. I think that's going to showcase a lot more of what Pat does. You yeah. know, um, Pat's one of those guys where he literally can do everything, everything. So there's so many facets to his game. People just haven't even seen yet because he's so successful at certain aspects. For his first fight, the commentating on the on like everything he was doing, I mean, there was not one negative thing said. You know, yeah. like yeah. it was just compliment after compliment. Yeah, whether he was on the ground or what you know standing up. Yeah, it was it was nice to hear, and it was nice uh, that Joe Rogan and some of those guys were there, so they understood what he was doing jujitsu wise, you know. And they understood they understood what the other guy was doing, what Tristan was doing, and um, and I thought they did a good job for, for the most part. You know, Curtis, there. the Curtis who hangs out over there and takes photos at, uh, at Daniels and yeah, yeah. Anyway, so he he messaged me that night when when uh, Pat had just won. And was about to talk to Rogan. And he's like, you think Rogan's going to get more out of him than you did? Ah. <laughs> Probably not. Well, he did it. Like, I, don't yeah. know if you, I don't know if you know, Pat's dad was the mayor of like Bristol. Oh, really? And so Pat is very good at doing the politician thing. He, yes. You know? He says exactly Six. what he needs to say and not too much. Yeah, yeah. Don't, you he's know, he's not going to give you any rope nope. to hang himself with nope. for sure. He's doing, he does a really good job with that. Yeah, he made my brain work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What am I gonna ask him? Yeah, next? hold up your game, sure. Oh, that's so funny. And so yeah, I told him I was like, yeah, next time you come on, you can have some whiskey. Like, but and he was like, 
thing is, someone's gonna have to drive me home. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I'll appreciate drive home. it. I'll pay for the Uber. I don't care. I would love to see that man with the whiskey. Does he get mellowed? <laughs> he is hilarious. Hilarious. All these guys. He yeah, be yeah. Out on, unless he drinks. Yeah, they're. <laughs> They're fun, man. They're crazy. Yeah, all those guys. You, you know, everyone gets like a little loose and, you know. You know but how come everybody turns me down then? Why are you not drinking whiskey? You trying to behave? Long drive? Just It's just a drive. Yeah, that's it, man. Otherwise, I'd yeah. 100%. Yeah. I'm looking for a new studio. Maybe it should be in like a hotel or something and just people can crash. <laughs> you seem like, a, like an RV, all. you know? Well, just take the RV around. That way people have no excuse. Listen, Show up at someone's house. I've everything from a shed behind my house to an yeah, RV. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. Unique. See, there you, you know, go. See, there you go. Actually, that might help. That'd be sick. Just fucking drive it to every gym. And be yeah, like, Blake, who wants to be on the yeah, show? Like you have no excuse now, motherfucker. But there is, I like that. I'll write that on the side of the truck. Uh, <laughs> no, there's the busting with the boys barstool guys that fucking do the bus. Yeah. That's already kind of done. You come up with but, you know, this is done too. Everyone's already in the house already. You know You've what I mean? You've been insulting me since you got in here. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. Nobody watches this shit. Everybody's done this before you. You need to I'm get use those words as get one of those motorcycles with a little sidecar and hook microphones up to it and just drive around and It'll do your interviews there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one's done that before. <laughs> Coffees in cars, or what is it? Uh, comedians in cars. Comedians in cars getting coffee. So maybe it'll be like fighters in motorcycles getting fucked up on whiskey. No? Martial arts and motorcycles. Yeah, that totally, all that mixes That's together real well. Movie. Alcohol, motorcycles, fighters. Yeah, just... But we'll just be on a flatbed. So we won't oh, be yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah, that's, that's smart. That's smart. Oh, yeah, good. there you go. Yeah, that'll work. You do that. <laughs> I feel like we just solved all the show problems. Uh, do you have any current events that we should discuss? Do you want to discuss the, the fights? Do you want to talk about the use of the fights? Obviously? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, what do you, think, what do you think overall of the fights? The night of fights? Oh, well, they're pretty good. You know, um, you know, I thought that it was nice seeing uh, Hardy get, get, get put down. I'm sure everyone enjoyed that. It was a nice little round of applause. And, and I got scared for, what, 0.2 seconds before he got caught? Yeah, he, he was coming he in. Rivasa, yeah, he, nice was kinda, he was kind of coming Rivasa in. Wobbled. Yeah, yeah. Everybody put their shoes away. Yeah, and that's that's a little bit more of that experience, you know. And uh, he, he clocked them in, in a weird way, right? It was yeah. like on the side of the head. Yeah. But it, it was like a sloppy. He just came in, came in sloppy, tried to pressure him. It was a little sloppy, and that's what happens, man. You come in and... These guys, these experienced guys, you know, you're not just gonna necessarily run them over, man. They're gonna they're gonna bite down on that mouthpiece every once in a while and just they're gonna throw back and especially the heavyweights, especially the heavyweights. That's what Vasa guy got so many fans, I feel like, in that fight. Yeah, yeah. He's so fucking likable. Good. I, like you know what it is? He's so likable and fucking Hardy is so unlikable. Yeah. Yeah. That it's like uh, when yeah. you're gonna come out to the Spice Girls. What's that? Yeah. You're gonna come out to the Spice Girls, you're gonna get some fans. Yeah. Is that what you guys are to? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hardy. That's what, yeah. I was watching with my sister who knows nothing about anything and she was like oh sat down and watched the whole fight I was like is that, 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 that what it took that what we <laughs> yeah yeah he, so he won on a couple different assets yeah, there you yeah, know bro. you know who was an asshole that night the guy who put hot sauce in the fucking shoe everybody that see that that's terrible why who walks around with hot sauce fucking poor, what what's wrong with hot sauce I mean who just walks around with that shit because Who's it was just Poirier got fighting and it's Poirier's hot sauce Oh, Some asshole all right, I got you. I got you. hot sauce. You can tell by the little bottle. And this fucking guy's just having fun, you know, being a silly goose with everybody. And this dick just. In all, in all fairness, he shouldn't be drinking other people's fucking beers, anyways, because the hot sauce could have killed the bacteria. No telling what the fuck you're even drinking. That's pretty gross. You know, no yeah, you. yeah. And and those guys too. I mean, they get they get drug tested so hard. You never know. You never know. I mean, that's where my mind goes. That's a conspiracy and a half. Yeah, but that's a good point. Yeah, man. I when someone hands you something and the stands cool, man. Thank you. I'm gonna I'll enjoy it backstage. You know, I don't fucking know you. I mean, I appreciate it. It's just about to get roofied or something. And then yeah, yeah, who knows? And he's got to go, you know, piss with USADA. And next thing you know, he's I swear I didn't do it. I just drank yeah. And then Greg shirt. Hardy gets that loss taken off. You know, like who knows, right? Yeah, you can't be doing that. You're jinxing everything. Yeah, I can't be doing uh, that. So, that, yeah, that was good. What else? I thought Ryan Hall, Ryan Hall getting knocked out was, and I, I like Ryan Hall. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? You know, so I kind of, after a while, you knew sooner or later someone was, was not going to fall into what that you, game. What do you mean by that? What are you doing? You know, he was trying this uh, this weird funky entry. It almost looked like Donkey Guard, Jeff Glover shit. 
that he was doing, you know, we're trying to come in and hook the leg. And it was this weird opposite Iminari roll kind of funky thing he was looking to get into. And I heard he broke his hand. I don't know when he broke his hand. I don't even remember him throwing a punch, you know, but, um, you can't do that shit with these guys, man. It was just like, it was so turning into fighting. like a clown show. And he's fighting every so, how often? Every Hardly years. ever. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind of played himself a little bit there, but I am a Ryan Hall fan <laughs> and I, I am a fan of his MMA, but it's like, you just, you're, you, you kind of reap what you sow there, you know? Um, so yeah, so that fight was interesting, obviously. And then, you know, Connor kicking Dustin Poirier's hip, breaking his leg. And then, so you say hip, it was a hip. Yeah. Did you see the video? I yeah. Saw the video of the elbow. So he hit the hip. And so when he hit the hip, I think his leg broke there. Cause that's when Dustin was like, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think Dustin think felt Dustin it. Dustin really knew that he broke out of his throat. Yeah, you can feel stuff sometimes. Yeah. You can feel the funky guys making noise or whatever. Because it's not that he thought that he broke his leg probably, but he was like, you fucked up. Yeah, kicking the hip, you know. And then when he put his weight back down on it and went to go move, then it's just, you know. That is not what I expected that fight to go, go down like. Yeah, well, um, I, I didn't have any expectations really for it because I didn't know who was going to, you know, third fight. Who's going to make the adjustments and all these yeah. other things? For all I knew, Connor was going to come out and head kick him, you know? Or for all I knew, Dustin was going to knock him out, you know? I mean, who knows? But um, I like Dustin a lot. I respect that guy's work ethic. I think yeah. the way that he does everything. I'm like a huge Dustin fan. As, as a coach, he looks like a guy you'd want to coach. Yeah. I look at fighters like a lot under that framework now. There's, there's plenty of fighters out there. I'm like, I would not want to be that motherfucker's so coach. So he, he gets the belt, you think? He beats, uh, what's his name? Oliver? Uh, I don't know. You know, Oliver is a stud right now. He's getting better. But stud. He's he's one of the few guys. You know, when I teach MMA, I always tell everyone stay off your back at all costs. Never go to your back. Charles, he's one of the few people that can go to his back, and I'd be you'd very confident that he's going to get a sub or do something to you, man. Yeah. You know, um, he just poses a lot of serious problems and is very technical. He's very, and his approach, he's very smart with how he begins fights and how he works guys with his front kicks and all that stuff during the course of the fight. He's very intelligent. And because of that, he's one of those guys I just couldn't bet against him right now until you see someone actually figure him out at this point or, or see him go down, you know. But I don't, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he was a champ for the next few fights at least. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, he's good all the way around, you know. Yeah, I didn't always feel that way, yeah, you know. Like he had a bunch of speed bumps. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, which gives, which makes me like him even more. Right, because he you know? figured something out. Yeah, you know, he didn't just give up, and he kept obviously improving. You see a lot of fighters, man. They put it in cruise control, and they do busy work all the time, and they never actually improve. I mean, there's fighters that I've seen, um, you know, for the last decade that literally look exactly like the same fighter yeah, he from 10 years ago. He no. This shit grows too quick. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I enjoy the fights. It wasn't any, you know, I don't know. I've seen better cards before. Yeah, yeah. I thought the fight, I thought the, you know, card Pat was on, you know. I thought that was one of the best fight cards, you know, I've seen in, with Rose and mm -hmm. uh, Valentina and, you know, and all the other champs, Usman and everyone. I mean, that was Do we know who the chaos. main event is for the Pat one? Well, Sean is, I believe, the co-main. Is Brady the co-main? Yeah, I believe oh, wow. so. Him and... and Kevin, I think, I believe are, oh, are yeah, I think they're, I think they're the co-main. So this whole thing of them getting out of the counter or him getting out of the counter fight actually played out better. Right? Um, yeah, potentially, right? You know, it's one of those things. Like you're gonna get more eyeballs because you'll be higher up on the court, but then obviously yeah. a counter fight, you'll be a lot lower, but then you're gonna get a ton of viewers as well. Yeah, you know, Sean's one of those guys. Sean's a stud, so regardless, he's gonna. He's going to be fine no matter what card he's on, you know. Excited to see that one. Yeah, so he's – everyone's going to – people are going to like to watch him fight, you know. He bangs, man, and yeah. his jiu-jitsu is great. And he's just – he looks the part, and he's got all that. He checks all those boxes, you know, as yeah, far yeah. as that's concerned. So, he's a stud. I agree. We have any fights this weekend? Yes, it's a fight night. Who? Oh, there we go, right? Who the fuck is Dan Rodriguez? Not sure. This is UFC. Can I get any names? Hmm. 
Sometimes we do this though, and then I come back and I'm like, "Put a girlfriend's fighting." How the fuck do we not know? Well, this? where is this card? Oh, at the UFC Apex. The Apex. Huh? Oh, what's on this? The, is, oh, that's the oh, this, yeah. So what's on the main? Oh, oh my lord! Oh, oh, oh yeah, there you go. I was gonna say, I was like, "Pocket like, chess." All right. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm definitely not watching that <laughs> I love watching Jeremy Lisa Stevens Tate fight. Is coming back. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't seem too excited about that one. Oh, Jeremy Stevens is fighting. Yeah. Yeah, you want to know something funny with Vieira? Um, so the first, when uh, Pat and I were at the UFC Apex, or, you know, the, the fight where the kid lost weight or missed miss weight. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. We were actually staying in uh, Vieira's room. Cause I found his UFC packet and the fight before that is when he gassed and he got, he got tapped out by the guy that's like a blue belt, you know, okay. and he's a world champion yeah. um, just because he gassed. And so that was the fight that was a weekend before. So now we're in the room and I find his packet. I'm like, Oh shit, this is like an omen. I didn't tell Pat. Yeah. I didn't tell Pat. I was like, shit. And then that guy, you know, and then Pat's guy misses weight by like two weight classes, Which you know, bad, but it's good. I still don't even think I ever told Pat that story. I forget. Yeah, I forget. Got it right here. Looking yeah, for you found everybody. found that dude's paperwork. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so this isn't gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good card though. Yeah, that's some good guys. Um, and some interesting matchups. You know, yeah. see how things kind of go. But um, I don't know why I always like Jeremy Stevens. I like Jeremy. You know, but Jeremy's one of those guys where he fights out of one stance primarily. I mean, where it, where he's going to give you kind of like what I call like the, the hybrid MMA fighting stance. Mm. And he just throws bombs from there. I like watching him fight. You know, I think he's just a super tough dude. And um, he just goes and get, gets after it. So I like watching him on that aspect. You know, I don't know too much about um, the guy he's fighting, but he obviously looks like a stud Are too. Are you on the Islam hype, uh, hype train? Yeah, I like Islam, you know. And uh, now... Um, I find that sometimes he's a little relaxed, a little too relaxed in certain fights where I feel like, I feel like he, he should be able to just kill everyone at yeah. a certain point. So it'll be interesting to see if he it. starts. Yeah. I feel like, you know, um, the beginning stint when he was in the UFC was just kind of just try not to make mistakes and, and that kind of situation, you know, but you know, when you are going to be at that championship level, I mean, I think you got to flip a switch and you got to go oh, in a kill true. mode. Yeah. yeah. You got to be, people have to be kind of afraid of you as far as I'm concerned, yeah. you know? And I think people are becoming afraid of him, you know, mm-hmm. and, cause he, he can, he's another one of those guys that can just do everything as well. Yeah. So he's Khabib's cousin or training or something, something, him, something like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Khabib's, I mean, until Khabib got to, to his last five fights, he was also that guy who everybody was like Mr. Peaceful Maybe not. Yeah. You know, everybody respected him, obviously, for his, yeah. for his skill level. But I don't know if fear was the yeah. word that they would maybe say. Yeah, we were so in, uh, you know, and obviously in the combat samba world, where everyone was very familiar with Khabib. You know, since he was a stud back then, world champion and, and everything. Yeah. And, and people don't really realize to become a world champion in combat samba. I mean, we go to the world championships and there's UFC guys fighting, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's or guys from one and guys from all over the world. I mean, high level professional fighters are out there and, and so he was killing it yeah to become a world champion in combat sambo you're pre, you're pretty much you're you're good yeah. you're good you know um doesn't mean you're the greatest by any means or anything like that but it means you know you've got definitely a couple like a switch to you you've got a fifth gear you've got something yeah, you yeah. can do there yeah for sure those are good guys to keep an eye on um and uh because most of those guys are actively fighting and you know m1 one and, yeah. and all the other big organizations and they're they're studs they're badasses you know well let's see if islam pulls uh pulls it into the fifth gear yeah yeah brother you probably will it's been a pleasure to have you on yeah thanks for thank having you for me for coming on thank you for the drive uh we're due for a whiskey and, and shooting guns or throwing knives in, into a you do not want to do whiskey while you're shooting guns but we can <laughs> shoot what and then we can drink whiskey afterwards okay and then I don't like that order, but that's fine. Yeah, you know, every once in a while you gotta make some sacrifices. <laughs> it's not that I don't like it. I'm just not gonna have you <laughs> hammered with a gun around me. And then bring Santa into the mix. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, and all <laughs> that. You know. uh, Brother, hey, it, man. Great Thanks time. So Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. It's fun.